If you're going on a cruise, especially for the first time, there are some things that are not only not obvious, but the cruise line most likely won't tell you. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, if you already have a few cruises under your belt, then you probably know many of these things. Although I am willing to bet there's probably one or two that might come as a bit of a surprise. But if you are a new cruiser, these are definitely some things that the cruise lines, well, likely they're not going to be telling you at all. Now, some of these are pretty important to know and others are just plain good tips. Now, before I get started, I did wanna mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative or enjoyable in any way, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's get started. Number one, there really is no actual luggage limit, at least nothing that is enforced at the moment. So even though most cruise lines do have suggestions or luggage limits and requirements listed on the website, in reality, when you do get to your cruise ship, you can hand your luggage off to the porter and nobody is going to ask you how many pieces of luggage that you have. So while I know a lot of us, we wanna be careful to not overpack too much, don't stress out too much. It is a little bit better to have, at least on your first cruise, more than you need than get on your cruise and realize you forgot some things at home. Number two, shore excursions. Now, I think a lot of people are aware that you don't have to book your shore excursion with the cruise line. There are alternatives. But one thing that the cruise lines don't often tell you is that you may actually get onto your shore excursion and find that some people have booked that excursion directly with the company. That actually happened to us when we were on an excursion in Belize going to Gough Cay several years ago. We actually booked it privately, but on our excursion, there were people that were there on a carnival shore excursion. So this is something to be aware of. You can find these things out just by doing a little bit of research. Now, the other thing is, sometimes an excursion may take you to a local beach. Now, this can be fine, but oftentimes this is going to be much more expensive than if you just go on your own. Now, of course, you do wanna do some research, but if that beach is only 10 to 15 minutes away by taxi, oftentimes they are, then it probably is much cheaper for you to do this excursion on your own. Now, the caveat is that when you do book directly with a cruise line, you do get a guarantee that if there is anything that happens, the cruise ship will wait for you. So that is something that is genuinely important to be aware of. But if you plan your day well and make sure that you get back to the cruise ship, at least let's say an hour and a half before the all aboard time, you should be fine. Now, if you've been on a cruise before, or even if you are planning your first cruise, please let me know if you prefer to book your excursion with a cruise line or if you prefer to do it on your own. Number three, if you get a bout of seasickness, you do not have to suffer. Now, even though I think we should all be bringing some over-the-counter seasickness medication with us on our cruises, trying to really prevent any of this, if it does happen or you forgot to bring your bonine or your dramamine, well, there are some solutions. So first of all, you can go down to guest services and oftentimes they will have a couple of seasickness medications. So they're not gonna give you an entire package, but they will give you a couple most of the time that are going to help. Now, the other thing that you can do is you can go to the dining room or you can go to the buffet and you can ask for a green apple. You can cut up some green apple slices. That actually does help to quell a queasy stomach. And the other thing that you can ask for is if there is any fresh ginger or candy ginger. Some cruise lines do have it and it really does work. Number four, cruises are different this way. You can actually drink pretty much everywhere on a cruise ship. So you know how when you're on land, you're at home, and if you go to a bar, you pretty much have to finish your drink in that bar. You can't go walking to another bar or walking to another restaurant and bring your drink, but you can actually do this on a cruise ship. So don't be surprised when you're on a cruise that you'll see people walking in the halls with their drink or even taking the elevator. Number four, most cruise lines allow you to bring wine, and soft drinks on a cruise. Now, if you're a light drinker and you don't have a beverage package, this is really a great way to save money. And this is really in the information that the cruise lines have, but it's not something super obvious that they're going to tell you. But this is actually something that you can do. So check your cruise line policies, 
but many cruise lines do allow you to bring one bottle of wine per person or even a bottle of champagne, which is just perfect even to make mimosas. Just grab a little bit of orange juice from the buffet and you can have mimosas in your cabin. Now, when it comes to soft drinks, there are limitations. It's usually about 12 or so, so basically a small quantity. And what some people do is they pack their carry-on piece of luggage because you do need to bring this on on embarkation day, but they put their case of soda, they put their wine bottles in that, roll it on on their embarkation day, and then they of course drink that, empty it out, and then by the time the cruise finishes, they have that carry-on piece of luggage that is perfect to bring extra souvenirs home. Now I do have one little warning when it does come to the wine that you bring on board your cruise ship. If you bring that bottle of wine to the dining room, you are going to be charged a corkage fee. However, if you open up your bottle of wine in your cabin, that is just fine. So what some people do is they actually get a wine glass, they just fill it right to the very top, and if you are a light drinker and that is enough for you, well, you can just bring that straight to the dining room. Cruise line theme nights. Now many cruises are actually going to have some pretty fun theme nights. These are theme nights where people dress up, there can be special activities or parties, and a lot of people do like to participate. But then they say, how do I find out? What are the theme nights on my cruise? But it really isn't necessarily obvious. The cruise lines don't really send out an email or anything, or even put that information usually in the itinerary. So the way to find out is really by joining Facebook groups or by watching cruise videos and cruise vlogs or reading cruise reviews. That is really the best way to find out that information. Now on your cruise, you might have a 70s night, a white night, a scarlet night, an orange party. So it is something to make sure you know before you go. You just might miss out on a can't miss cruise port of call. Now I know this one is really disappointing, but it can happen the cruise line can change your itinerary. Now, sometimes what happens is the itinerary can change once you're on the cruise ship itself. And by the way, this is actually in the cruise contract or in the fine print. But what can happen is due to sea conditions or weather related reasons, the cruise ship can't get safely into a cruise port of call. And whenever possible, the cruise line will replace that cruise port of call. But sometimes what happens is the itinerary can change even before your cruise has started. As a matter of fact, I have a cruise that I have booked and we're a couple of months away and I have received notification of three different port changes. Yes, one of our cruise ports of call has actually changed three times. Now, even though it's disappointing and it's disappointing for me too, the best thing that we can do is be flexible because in the end, we're still going to have a great cruise. Cruise ducks and door decorations. Now, if you're going on a cruise for the first time, there are some things that happen on cruises that just don't tend to happen many other places. And well, one of those things are actually this trend that is called cruise ducks or cruising ducks, where basically some people bring rubber ducks on their cruise and they will hide them around the cruise. So if you do find rubber ducks on your cruise, this is all part of a game. They usually will be tagged with rules and why not play along? The other thing is door decorations. All of the doors on cruise ships really, they do look the same. So what some people do is they bring a door decoration. Sometimes it's very elaborate. Other times it's just a magnet that's a little bit of fun, but people do actually bring these on a cruise. Cruise meetups. Now cruise ships want everybody to have a good time on a cruise. So there are self-led meetups on pretty much all of the cruise lines that people can partake in. Now you'll find this information in your cruise planner. So there is the friends of Bill W. If you know, you know. You'll also usually find a solo meetup. So that's great for people that are cruising on their own. You'll also find an LBGTQ plus meetup and a meetup for those that are between 18 and 21. Now I have a couple more and then I have the one that cruise lines never ever talk about. So cruise cabin walls are usually magnetic. Now, if you've watched any of these cruise tips and cruise hacks videos, then you may know this, but if it's the first time that you're starting to research your cruise, this may be new information. So cruise cabin walls are usually metal. And so what you can do is you can bring small magnet hooks, small magnet clips, and you can actually add extra storage space to your cabin. Now, a couple other space saving secrets for your cabin, your luggage can actually be stored under your bed. So there's no reason to leave that in your cabin. After all, they are pretty cozy. 
The other thing that you want to do is take a look in your cabin for any places where there are some secret storage areas. So under your bed, you may have drawers. The other place to look is also in your bathroom. Sometimes you'll find a drawer right under the sink. And we actually had a cabin where the desk or table actually slid right into the dresser to add extra space. Cruise ship water. Now I know a lot of us like to drink our bottled water, but the water on cruise ships is actually drinkable. So although they do filter and desalinate that water on the cruise ship itself, it is perfectly safe to drink. Now there are two places on the cruise ship that you're just not going to find on the cruise ship deck plan. And those are the jail or the brig and the morgue. So of course, these are the realities of life. Now, whether you're a first time cruiser or you've cruised before, I would love to hear from you. Please let me know what are the other things maybe that cruise lines don't tell us that people should be aware of or just other things that people should know that are not necessarily obvious. Now, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.